Okay. So we're going to continue what we started last night. Today is part two. And we're talking about gratitude. So yesterday we spoke about three things. Who remembers what was number one? Rabbi gave three different scenarios. Yes. Number one. Going back, Rabbi. Saying thank you to the teacher uh, with consideration of, um, in the um, thought of like, why should we say thank you? Anyway, we're paying tuition. Right. So that's, that's one. The second yes. one was, I prefer that you don't, you walk to school even though the neighbor is going. I don't want to be indebted to her to always say thank you. Yeah. Number three. Third is um, uh, buying a gift, driving, pretty much. So that when they call about seminary or they call to find out about my daughter, she'll only have good things to say. Okay. Right. Okay. So one of the things that I want to deal now is mm -hmm. that the justification why I'm not saying thank you. Why should I say thank you? I'm paying for it. Yeah. When somebody paying you a rent that you say to you, thank you. No. Why not? Because they feel they're obligated. You, that's your job. That's what you're supposed to do for them because they're paying you for it. They're up. They're Magiali. <laughs> Magiali. <laughs> <laughs> they deserve it. It's coming to them. Now, did you think about it once? If I'm paying, why should I say thank you? And it's something to think about it. So if, the, if it's a child, if he gets it from home, so he's not saying thank you not to the mailman, not to the grocery store, not to his rabbi, to the taxi driver, to the doctor, Let's ask the kids, okay, who's saying thank you to the guy who cleaning the, the yeshiva after they go home? Nobody. I always said thank you to everyone. Okay, so now, how much appreciation they have for the teacher, so when it comes Hanukkah time or Purim time, who coming to teach us and says, you know, thank you for teaching us. We, we, we're going to give you a gift, not because I want you to mark my test in a better way. Bermet, you deserve it. Rabbi, the gift became mandatory. Because if not, if not, it will yeah. not happen. It will not happen, yeah. So nobody really appreciates. Nobody's saying thank you in reality. Yes, so we have to make it what? Mandatory. Yeah, mandatory. Yeah. Which is... Which is... Unfortunate. There's no taste to it. There's no taste to it. I want to ask you, where did you learn uh, Aleph Bet? School. In which School. grade? We went to kindergarten. Okay, who taught you how to read? A teacher. Parents. Not parents, teachers, school. Parents. Abraham Levy. Okay. 
So I remember still in Israel you learn how to read in a very early age. In my time they didn't hold from early age, they were holding first grade, you have to start learning how to read. The child is more uh, capable. I remember the teacher until now, I remember his beard, the glasses that he wore, everything I remember. Do you know why? Without him, I will not know anything. He taught us how to read. Who went to the Rebbe of first grade and said, thank you for teaching me how to read? Did it happen over here? No. No. Okay. So now, so what are we expecting from the child? That's what he sees. That's your job, you know? I remember even the flashcards. You know that? The flashcards that he had, I remember. It was more than 60 years ago. I remember it like, like yesterday. Because I have to thank him all my life for his patience that he, that he had to teach us. And he didn't get a salary. Of course he got a salary. What what is salary have to do with me? Meaning you have obligation. We have obligation. The Midash el Akaratatov, without it, the Torah is worthless. Because then we cannot appreciate Hashem also. The whole problem that we have with the kids and the, the Shlom Bait and everything else. We're not appreciating each other and we're not appreciating what we have and we are we're not appreciating that we have kids. Everything, Magia Live and Magia Live and Magia Live and Magia Live. So, that's where it starts, that's where it ends. It's, it's impossible. Actually, actually, the other one don't need you, thank you. You need it, you. Because it's your obligation in order to be a mensch. The obligation is on you to say thank you to the other one. He doesn't need you, thank you. So that's why I saw yesterday that uh, the picture that I spoke about, right? They were posted all over. I don't know where did they find it. I assume that they found it on, on Google. And you see why the 90 years old man have to give a milk to a, a, a cat. He says, it's not for the cat. I have to do it. I have to do it. The Torah says you're supposed to feed your animals before you feed yourself, right? Yeah. Yeah. Thank them for enough. their thank them for what they do for you. It's chesed. It's chesed. No, it's to work on your midah that you have to thank everybody. I think I told you, 
And I'll tell you again. I'll tell you again. You know, before the end of Yom Kippur, there is a tefillah called Neila, right? Over there, as far as I know, every rabbi, he stand there and he say about Thai. Here we're going to finish the Chag now, the 40 days of Tshuva. Everybody do Tshuva there. Not by me. I have a long list of to say thank you. Starting from the Jamash, yes, to, to all the people who I know what they're doing in the shul. Each one, they deserved, thank you, they deserve it in, in such a moment. If I were not going to do it, okay, my Torah is worthless. Worthless. Do we appreciate Akadosh Borhu? Do we appreciate Hashem? Yes. In any yes. situation? Not always, no. No. I don't. No. We should, right? Huh? We should, right? For every good and every bad. We yes. Have Thank you. Yeah. The fact that you're still alive, you have to say thank you. Rabbi, also thank you for everything bad that is happening to us, right? Who said it's bad? Uh, like whatever we feel is not right that is happening right now in our life we should say thank you for that also right do you know how many things you're doing to your kids and they think not right now that you're doing bad to them mm -hmm. right you're right yes but you know that you're doing the best thing for them right yeah, okay that's it so no matter what You know, we're taking each other for granted, and you think the kids don't see it? Oh, the kids are sharp. Oh, oh, they sharp. So now, I want to deal with the gift that we're giving, right? And we're saying, I hope that the gift will be Something, as we say, uh, you have to be polite and I have to be interesting. Also, I have an interest to, to, to do it. Why? Because maybe the teacher will be nicer to my daughter or maybe she will throw a nice words to the high school that she's going to go. Now, is this a real thank you or is this is a thank you kara on the surface? A yeah, thank you condition to get something out of it. So it's fake. It's fake, I think. Yeah. It's fake, right? It is fake. It's fake. Okay. Now, I know people that they have made at home, made. She's coming to clean. Some people which are bechlal, you know, I'm paying, I have to get the maximum out of her. And why she, and she doesn't have to complain, I prepare her lunch and so on. I give her a gift. Yanni, you doing her a favor. 
But what happens if one day the maid calling you up, she says, I cannot come today. I saw people losing their mind. Boy, boy, boy. Yes, Rabbi, our, my cleaning lady does, does it every Friday before Shabbat. I'm going to go to her house, Rabbi, and drag her, and drag her by her hair to my house. No joke. I want to do it. You know, I have people complaining about the maid, she's like this, she's like that, she's like this. So she decided to leave. They lost their mind. She said, where, where did she go? I said, why are you complaining? But they met. They met. We have to say thank you even to the maid. Of course, yes. Rabbi, I say thank you every time I pay her. Very good. Yes. Me Very too. good. Yeah. It's not that she needs you. Thank you. And for her, enough is, is the money. It's just to make you a better person. So that you're Rav, sensitive enough to other people. So the Rav, 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 my wife gives her a three-course meal. Ma? My wife gives her a three-course meal. Okay. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. She deserves it. Rabbi, it's also a Kedush Hashem. Yeah, okay, fine, fine. But a real akarata tov, a real a gratitude, it doesn't have no interest inside no nothing inside. It's pure, pure, pure saying, thank you from the bottom of my heart. How many times we buying a gift for our wives just to keep them quiet? Yes? Is this mean a karata tov? It's conditioned. Here, I bought you water. You want? Leave me alone. That's not a gratitude. That's called bribery. That will last only for two weeks. A good a gratitude is coming from the heart. Yes, you deserve it. Yes, you agree. You a great wife or you great husband. Without any any no business attached. No business involved. Unconditional. Yes. This is unconditional, yes. Why? Because the outcome can be something very bad. And the Gemara says, A kofer betovat chavero. When something, when somebody is saying, what favor he did for me? Why should I say thank you to him? I'll give you a scenario and you tell me what you say, okay? You gave your car to somebody ask you, you know, I have guests coming from the airport, and you have a big car. Can I borrow your car? Vakasha, vakasha, here is the keys. Bravot. Do you deserve a thank you? Do you deserve yes. one? Yes, yes, Rabbi. Okay. Yes. Now you see that this guy came back, dropped the keys, and go home. The friends of yours saying to him, shame on you. Why don't you say thank you? He said, why should I say it? thank you? You know, in the middle of, of the one week, the car stopped. And I had to take it and I had to call a tow truck, and they came and they did this. He actually, he should say thank you to me. 
if it's not happening to me, it will happen to him. Does he have to say a thank you? Yes or no? Yes. Still yes, he has to say thank you. But he feels that he did you a favor. He took it to the mechanic. Rabbi, if he doesn't say thank you, it's just showing how he is midot are. It's not a, it doesn't reflect on the person who's doing the chesed. No, Rav? I'm asking you. I know the, the, the answer. Is he have <laughs> a legitimate point to say, you know, you gave me a lemon? No. He can't complain. No, he shouldn't complain. He shouldn't complain. Yeah. He shouldn't should complain. He should appreciate that he got the keys to the car. To the car, yeah. So now, it is a conversation between a husband and a wife. The husband comes home and saying to, to his wife, did you hear this? As a chutzpah? My friend, I borrowed his car and I got stuck. And I got stuck. And I took it to the mechanic. I almost lost my guest that came on the airport. And he fixed it and so on. Now they, they're asking me to say, thank you. Do you hear such a chutzpah? Don't you think he has to say thank you to me that I took care of his car? Yeah. Imagine you kiss listening to all this. You're talking to your wife. What do you think will happen to, to the kids? They learn to be chutzpani. Are they going to say thank you? No. No, nope. they won't. They won't. No. Nope. The kids of today, me mainly it's out for them to say thank you because they're chutzpani. So now we have to add more into it. Okay. But Rabbi, shouldn't the owner of the car offer some money to the person who fixed his car? No matter what he will do, I assume that the other one, okay, saying, Thank you to the other one to say thank you that you took care of my car. I'm sorry it happened to you. Right. I really appreciate it. My problem is why the other one who got the car don't say thank you. Right. He should say thank you, definitely. Yes. And he's going with the feelings that he did him a favor. In these kind of situations, should that person avoid the other person? Like if they know, let's say, they felt, let's say, used, let's say. Should they avoid this person that they feel is using them? Like wh whoever it might, might have been in that situation. Yeah. To avoid it, in the, should they avoid this interaction in the future? If you have a, a person that's taking advantage of of you. Okay. To, our, to our kids, of course, they're going to take advantage of us, but after all, they're our kids. Don't we take advantage of Hashem? Ah? Of course, definitely, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Every step of the way, we're taking advantage of Hashem. She said, okay, 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 okay. But the Gemara says, a kofer betovato shel chavero. If you don't know how to say thank you to a friend, so far, there is an outcome. So far, likfor betovato shel makom. 
then he'll be a cover with all the goods that Hashem gave to him. Hashem gave him a wife. He says, what did he give me? What did he give me? A headache he gave me. It better don't give me. And she is saying, what? You know, I should have fun until 20, 24, 25, and then I'll get my mind, this husband of mine. Ah. And the kids living in our homes, and they see mentality of not appreciating. And then we come into the kids and says, don't you know how to say thank you? Huh? Chutzpah? Why don't you say thank you? He says, uh, because the school that I'm living in is a very good school. He teaches how not to say thank you. Very good school. Abba and Ima. Abba comes home. Ima tired. Abba. Instead of saying you're tired, thank you very much, you know, for what. Why are you tired? What's your big deal? What's the big deal? My mother had. Ten kids, and she did it, and boom, 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 boom. The thank you, Bechlal, is not on the agenda. Now, why are you tired, Bechlal? The husband comes home, he's getting tired from, from work, upset. And say, why are you upset? Everybody is going to work. What's the big deal? If yes, if you're working so many hours, why I don't see the money I don't see? What a thank you you're getting. And the kids are, is that, oh, oh, Bechlal, no gratitude. Then go ask him to help at home. <laughs> Be my guest. Magiali, Mafito. Magiali. You'll cook for me, you'll clean for me, you'll chase after me. Everything is me, 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 me. Who taught them this? Abba and Ima. So what? Every time I come home, you're tired. How long do you think I can take this? That's the thank you. After you're going to work, after you're dealing with the kids, after you cook, after you clean, then why are you tired? Well, thank you. And the husband gets also thank you. My father also work. My brothers all going to work. They're not complaining as you are. And yet they making money. Where is your money for crying out loud? I see that you're very quiet, meaning we, we're hitting the nail on his head. Yeah? Now, before you're coming to the kids, I think we have to, to shape up.
because at the end, at the end, if we don't know how to say thank you to each other, at the end, we're not going to say thank you to Hashem also. Rabbi, is a kafei toiv the same thing as a magili? What? A kafei toiv. Somebody who's ungrateful, is that the same thing? Kafei toiv? Yeah. Ah, okay. Thank you, Rabbi. A kafei toiv? Yes. The magili. He has to wake up in the morning and he has to breathe and he can, and he has to no backache, no legs ache, no this, no that, shum davar, I have to. If something is going wrong, right away we say, Hashem, we complaining. Why are you complaining? Because we feel we deserve it. <laughs> Hashem, owe it to me. Was it Rafa? Hashem, owe it to me. That's This is the point that we're coming. Tell me something. If I'll come to a person and tell them, you know, you have to keep Shabbat. And one Shabbat he kept, oh Hashem. How does he feel? Huh? He feels amazing. He feels he's on a high. He loves it. Why? No, 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 no. Ah, uh, no. No. He feel now Hashem owe oh, him. <laughs> I didn't think of it that way, bro. That's I why. I guess. I kept. Where is my my medallion? Where is my medal? Where is it? The where's, fact my that... where's my reward? Yeah. Where's my reward? Um, can I ask you a question about that, actually? Yeah. Um. Because so, I I know some people, and I, I would tell them, you know, if you do this, you'll get a lot more blessings. Maybe Hashem is giving you so much, so much difficult times because you're not doing A B C, and then they start doing the things that are, you know the A B C, let's say, <laughs> and then they still do not see any difference in their life. So then they stop keeping it. You know what I mean? Like in that sense, what would is that bad to say? Because because to me, I feel like at some point Hashem puts us in a corner to see, to to tell us, you know, like just trust in me, like do what I ask you, just trust in me. You know what I mean? But then they don't see any difference in. So is is that a bad approach to look at? It's a bad approach, yes. Okay. Because who said that Hashem will send them more? customers on uh, Sunday? No, it's not. It's like, and I, I, I know them. I know a mother, let's say, she has like one trouble with one son because he was, uh, you know, he has certain sickness. Another one cannot, you know, cannot get pregnant. Another one, it's like so many different things. And I was telling her, you know, like you need to keep Shabbat, you need to keep the mikvah and all that stuff. Because I, I, I just thought maybe because Hashem is cornering her because she's not doing all these things that she's supposed to be doing. But is she in the point to say thank you to, to, to Hashem? So you're saying say thank you no matter what? But at what point do you feel like, okay, I guess, and I, was, I mean, I was just hoping, you know, if you well, see the you change, then the you start problem. keeping it. Tell you where is the problem. Mm-hmm. The fact that she woke up in the morning is Bechlal don't deserve any thank you. The fact that she is able to walk, I have to say. I have to. No, her personality is very is a very cheery personality, very grateful. Okay. Like I don't think No 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 no. If she's gonna be grateful, she'll keep all the Torah up to the last one. She's not great. But she did not grow up like that. You know, like, we, because we have this mentality because we grew up with this. We always it's listen a common to lectures. Sense. It's a common sense. I don't buy this. Okay. So I should leave her alone. I should never say these things. Tell her we are Jews and we're all obligated. 
Are you Jew? That's this is the first. You know, everyone that is not observant, my the first thing I will ask him. Excuse me, are you a Jew? Oh, you get so offended. So, what do I look like? I say, well, you you don't look like me. So maybe one of us is wrong. No. Either, either I'm stupid or but then they would tell you you have a different mind you have a different understanding I have a different understanding you know okay so maybe I'm a fool so, so let's see there is two people someone in this room is wrong wasting his life It cannot be two people that they right. But what if they think that you're wrong? Okay, Because some of them, they don't really see any. Good. <laughs> good. So we have already a dialogue. Okay. But uh, let's go back. The fact that we woke up in the morning and we're saying, Does every Jew have to say it? Thank you, Hashem, for waking me up. Of course. Uh, of course, yes. You can walk. You can see. You can hear. Tell me something, you know. Maybe it's a little bit off the uh, topic, but it's on the topic, I think. Who say thank you for Hashem, to Hashem that he has an appetite? Especially after Corona, Rabbi, when you lose your taste, you appreciate it very much. <laughs> but nobody says thank you, Rabbi. Nobody. You know, a poor man came to the Admor, to the Admor, he told them, Rebbe, I have nothing to eat. Rebbe, nothing to eat. Please. The Rebbe, she palel for me. Pray for me. So the Rebbe looked at him and told him, do you have appetite? Appetite you have? He said, of course I have. I'm hungry. He said, wow, you millionaire, you millionaire. You have appetite? He said, Rebbe, I have nothing to eat. He says, the guy before you was a millionaire over here. He came for me for a bracha. He doesn't have appetite. And he's ready to give everything just to have appetite. You, Baruch Hashem, you have appetite. Say thank you. That's really funny. <laughs> huh? That's incredible. That's so true. It's so funny. <laughs> wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah. People so, coming to complain. My kid is like this. My kid is like that. I don't know what to do. I'm tired. I took my kishkes out. Bah, 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 bah. Okay. Come to my office. And you see people sitting here crying. Young, they're not able to bring kids. Maybe IVF will do it. Maybe. They're ready to take your noise and your pain and everything else to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars just to have your problems. Just to have your problems. They're ready to wake up at night. They're ready to have through to go through all the nauseousness and the heartburns and everything else, just to feel what you feel. And we complain. I told you once. No, I'll tell you again. 
You know, many of my friends that were with me in the army, miskenim, they don't have no hands, no legs. They cannot put a tefillin. Only on the head they can put. They're not able to put on it. A person have hands, he don't want to put a tefillin. Meaning he's not appreciating what he has. So one time they called me, you know, I went once to visit there. I couldn't go back. This is a friend that we used to be in the army together. We played ball together, everything together. Now you see him with two hands for a metal with a kaha kazek. And that's how he has to operate. He cannot put a feeling on top of it. Before the operation, he was asking the doctor, tell me how much you're going to cut. He told him, what do you care? I have to cut it. Otherwise, you, you, you're you going to die. He said, no, at least leave me a place for that feeling. Oh, wow. You see how much we not appreciate And then he said, he put feeling one day. He says, Bono Shalom, I did you a favor. I put a feeling today. This is Bechlaz so crooked. So once they were asking me to come to speak in Mansi, in a place I think called Besrachel, it's a Besiako for high school girls, high school. Okay? I, I got there, they didn't tell me what is the topic. I said to the principal, okay, what do you want me to speak about? What can I talk to them? I said, Shlom Bait issues. Neut. Neut. <laughs> so she told me, talk about, it's news. I say, here? It's news? She said, yeah, I said, what's the problem? They don't want to put uh, tights. It's too hot, it's too this. I have uh, itches, speeches, all colors to your time. What I will say now? First of all, I'm, I'm, I'm a man, you know, I don't know how they feel. So in, in, in one side, it's not fair even. So now I have 10 minutes to think. 10 minutes to prepare it for 300 girls. So, while I'm walking to the microphone, bingo, I had an idea. And I told them the story that I told you now, I have a friend, they cannot put shoes anymore. They, uh, they need a special shoes. They don't have hands anymore. I told them, do you have legs? Say thank you that you have legs so, so you have something that you can cover. What do you want, Hashem, to put you uh, artificial leg and then you have to cover it by force? Appreciate the, the natural leg that you have, cover it. At least you have something to cover. When I went for a chemo, you know, so you waiting, you you have to wait in the waiting room until you turn come. I was an uh, outpatient, outpatient, not inpatient, outpatient. You taking a chemo and you go home. In the waiting room, you see all the ladies, Jew, non-Jews, black, Hispanic. Everybody 
Habibi cover in her hair. Alevai, all the Jewish girls will cover their hair like this. Up to here, Sagur Kara. Why? Why? They have no hair. They have no hair. The chemo take the hair out. So now they must cover now. If you want or if you don't want. So while we have it and everything is fine, why to complain? Why? And that's what the kids get gets from us. That's we have to argue with, with, with them to clean the table after them, to clean the room after them, to clean the shower after them with all the towels that they throw on the floor and they're waiting for Ima to pick it up, right? All the hair that is, that is in the bathtub, they don't care, they leave it there and they go. Somebody, the fryer will clean it, right? Did they say thank you, Abba, for preparing us such a nice bathtub? Mapitom! Magiali! Magiali! Abba, I need your car. No, I don't give you my car. Huh? Huh? Such a bad Abba. All my friends is there. Why don't you give it to me? Where are you coming from? Where are you coming from? Magi Ali? I'm your son. You owe it to me. <laughs> Did you hear that? The house that he has, the room that he has, the food that he has, everything. The car, you don't want to give me the car? As a chinuch. Oh, why, why? So, so, so what we have to do, so he can say, Abba, you know what? I'll clean the car, I'll clean this, I'll polish the car. Are you, are you going to give it? Me, you know, one, one time to go. And Abba says, okay, fine. But yet, is it a genuine? Or it's, no, it's, it's fake, it's a give and take. If you give that, me, then I'll that's for it. you. Give and take. That's it. I'll do this, maybe Abba will give me the car. But when they're small, let's say, and you want to teach them, for example, to um, to clean up or whatever it is, is it okay to, not to say to bribe, but maybe to give a reward or something like that? So, but, so here's where I get a little bit like stuck. Then they feel like they're always entitled to get a reward. And that kind of bothers me because here and there, like, I'll give a reward, but then sometimes like, like today was our cleaning day, you know, and, and we're all cleaning and, and they're like, oh, but what are we going to get for cleaning? And it bothered me. And I said, well, I'm cleaning also and everyone's cleaning it. You know, why does anyone have to get a reward for cleaning? A clean house is a reward. And, and so I didn't know, like, am I wrong for even giving a reward to begin with? Or do I make it like conditional? I, I don't know how to, you know what I mean? Cause they're small. So they're not motivated. They don't really care for a clean house. You see, if they're very small, so I'm not talking about this. I'm talking kids who already starting, you know, to grow up. And if they hear Abba and Ima thanking each other with all their hearts, no fake. Ima, thank you for the food that makes you such a food. And Abba gets up from his chair. He says, we have to help. We have to help Ima. Ima, please sit down. Now it's our time. Thank you again. Everybody say thank you to Ima with a smile on your face. Not saying 
Thank you. And behind there is the Gaga. A genuine one. And he must say thank you to Abba all the time. So then, the kids, we don't have to bribe them too much. And if you in school, right? If you go to nursery, you see for cleaning up the toys, they came up with songs to it. So the kids will clean Kara with songs and everything and say, thank you, Mora, thank you, Mora, thank you. Oh, they don't know what they're saying, but already they hear all the time, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And that's what it is. It's part of a chinuch. Like you want to teach a child not to get mad, not to get upset, to watch his language. This is part of it. Why is it something that... Actually, that's the main one. So we as parents, we have a job to do, a big job, to come up with all creative ideas and to mash, thank you Hashem for the snow, for the rain, and you explain why snow is good and why rain is good. You know, even for kids, just today I was talking to my wife. We had at home all the time. My father used to tell us, Chaval, I brought only six kids. He said, I shouldn't bring 12 kids. Ah. You're such a good kid, you know, I shouldn't bring more, but don't, <laughs> you don't do my mistakes. To my kids, that's why I love kids. And to my kids, they, they tell you. They say, how about my kids? They say, Yeladim ze simcha, Yeladim ze bracha. My kids will tell you all the time. They starting to complain, I start to, to sing. It was a song. I'm sure Kodrao they appreciate your voice that time. <laughs> because with all the balagan, we always you know, we said bring children to the world. Until now, I'm telling them, you're going to miss that. You're going to miss that. Especially when they're small, it's precious moments. Okay. No, you thank you, Hashem, that I can bring. If I, you know, I see people who are not able to bring. You don't know how, how much pain is this. What can you say? What can you tell? And I, and I get a, a lady of five kids, Billy Ainara, with all the, the, the pills that she takes and the IUDs that she puts inside and everything else. Bingo, she's pregnant. And she's coming over here to Shabbat. Unplanned one, unplanned. Accident child, accident child. By Hashem, everything is planned. <laughs> Instead of saying thank you, Hashem, thank you. And we're saying it, but 
בהלב. דוד המלך says, מה אשיב להשם? כל תגמולו היא עליי. What can I give back to Hashem with all the good that he does with me? What can I say? Today the kids, they're just looking what they're missing. They don't look what they have. What do I miss? Meaning what I have is already I have. זה מגיע לי. I deserve it. Why I don't have an iPhone? And how the child said, well, I don't deserve an iPhone? לא, לא מגיע לי iPhone? לא מגיע לי? מה מגיע לך? What is this? So how does it look? They're doing us a favor by eating. They're doing us a favor by going to school. Right? We have to bribe them to go to school. Right? And we have to take them to school. The prince in. Right? And... Everything we have to give and give and give, and he says, you have to. What do you mean, no? Magiali. What a chinuch. Oi, 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 oi. So, could they have in this kind of situation, if let's say it does happen, let's say with kids, when they are not grateful, So you, well, I typically empathize with them, right? And then, and then just tell them a story about somebody else that didn't have much. Is that the approach? You see, this you have to say not when we are starting to clash. You have to find the right time. Like I said many times, if you want to speak to your husband, not when he is... tired, not when he is this, you have to create atmosphere. The atmosphere has to be. So now, if you want to bring to a child to a point to say thank you, you need a relaxed atmosphere. You know, uh, from left, from left field, from, from left field. You know, kids, while they're eating the dinner, you know, I had a story today, I had to share it with you. You know, I heard today that uh, our people, that they don't have even what to eat. Why, why, why? You know, I feel so bad. What do you think we have to do? What do you think we have to do? You know, kids, I saw kids going to the garbage cans and they, they're searching for food. You're not sitting there and say, say thank you to Ima, you have something to eat. You know, you, there are boys over there, they don't have what to eat. You, the kid doesn't want to hear you. Here it comes, the mashgiach and start to tell me Musa Shmuzi Musa I'm not interested but you saying to the kids you know kids I want to tell you a story let's see what we're going to do to, they are also part of the of the story now there are few families, they don't have what to eat. What do you think we should do? So we're involving them. I'm sorry, Rabbi. Yeah, yeah, involve them. Should we give them part of our food? Should we send them some money? What do you say? 
Meantime, you planting seeds, they don't have what to eat, we have what to eat, Baruch Hashem. So you know, so after they saying what they saying, one say, Ima, we give it's Daka. Ima, you, you, you can give him a part of our food and so on and so on. And say, kids, I think, you know, at least I'm going to do it. At least me, I'm going to do it. I'm going to say thank you to Hashem. I, 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 at least I, I have food. What do you think? Should we thank Hashem? What do you think? But let them participate in the deal. So never tell them directly. What? What? You never want to tell them directly, right? You just want no, to tell no, them no, like, no, through no, a story. No, no, no. They coming as advisors. You asking them advice. What are we gonna do? Hmm. Piton, you see a different kid. He cares. And sometimes they can offer their own food and say, Imadan, you know what? Why don't you give our food? And now we have a ground to say, you know, kids, I'm going to say thank you to Hashem. Thank you, Hashem. Thank you for everything. What do you think is, do we have to say thank you? You're not attacking them, you're not giving them, you know, Musa, they became part of the advisors. So important. And they feel the pain that you feel for the families. Can we do it? Yes. Tell me, tell me, how frustrated we are that our kids don't appreciate us. Very much. We give them a whole lecture about it. <laughs> the lectures are not gonna help. That's the problem. Yeah. Lectures are not gonna help to make him participate. It will help. The teachers over here, when you have a chachke in your classroom, he likes to make another right away. What we gonna do with him? We're going to make him, you know, uh, very close to the teacher, you know. What do you think? How can we keep this class quiet? Maybe you're going to be responsible for the cleaning. Ah, you do something. Give them a job. Me, Tom, he feels Habibi. Nobody come to preach me. I became advisor to the teacher advisor. Vice, vice president. Vice president, be. <laughs> uh, they, they. It's bring their self esteem up, Rabbi. You told me you see a different kid. Nobody come to attack him. And now he feels, yes, that they. Now he feels the teacher. If you want your kids to feel you, to appreciate you, to say thank you for everything, we as a couple, we, we, we have to thank each other all day long and to say to Hashem, thank you, I found you. Thank you, I found you. But it's better to be a single man 40 years old, still looking for Shidduch, ah, or to be a single girl, already a woman, 35 years old, not married yet, every day is crucial, because her chances to bring kids to the world becoming very slim.
Thank God she got married 18, 19, 20. You off the market already when you're 20 years old, you off the market. 35 years old, she's still in the market, no buyers for her. Why are you complaining? Why? If the kids who will hear, there is nobody like your mother in this world. We married young, thank God, Hashem was so good to me, I found her. And Ima, when Abba is not home, she's saying to the kids, why, 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 I was so lucky. Hashem was so good to me. Thank you, Hashem, I found my husband. What a father you have, what this you have. These kids, you know, you don't have to say anything to them. It's coming natural to, to, uh, to appreciate, to say thank you to everybody. It's all coming from childhood. I remember as a child, when we sat on the bus and an older lady came into the bus, an older man, we couldn't sit down, we felt not in place. Right away we stood up and said to the man or to the lady, come, come, please, take my seat. Rabbi, or a pregnant woman. Yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. It doesn't exist. No. It does not exist. Why? Shame. I <laughs> paid Magi Ali Mazepo. I paid the fare as you are, no? So what if you have a belly? This is you and your husband problems. Not my problem. It's funny though, because sometimes I notice like if I would get up and give a seat to somebody or if my kids, I would tell them to get up. Like that person, they give him the seat, they say, no, 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 it's okay. It's okay. I'm like, come on, I want to teach him a lesson. <laughs> you know, but they say, no, no, it's okay. And, you know, it's like a missed opportunity. No, so, so you say to, to the old person, you know, I'm teaching my kids to respect you. Some lady once told me, I'm not old. And like all her hair was white. No. And it's like, I'm not saying you're old. <laughs> Not, and it felt like I was offending old, her. But my kids have to know that if a person is older than them, they they cannot sit down. We don't see it today. We don't see it. We lost it. And look at the names that we give today. Lital, Limo, yeah? uh, I don't know. Lior. Lior. I call Li, 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 Li. Bisli, Mitzli, Kindli, Bisli. I call Li, 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 Li. Lach, Met, Lach. It's so funny. How did you even think about that? I didn't even see the connection. <laughs> I call Lee. My but Rabbi, Lee. it's only Israeli people. Now it came all over. Americans call Leon. <laughs> Bruce Lee. Rabbi, is the same idea as the iPhone, iPad, and all of that, right? Exactly. Today, everything is I. You see, you're even Chinese rabbi. people. You're not existing, Bechlal. Rabbi. You're existing, I have to say thank you to you. <laughs> it's such a problem, you know, don't know what it is. Abraham Avinu was searching and saying, Mi Bala Bira, who created all this? Why? So I, I want to say thank you to him. Who is the boss of here? Somebody created all this. He couldn't rest. He said, somebody, 
we have to say thank you. And we as Jews, we have it in our system. We want to say thank you. We want to. But we're living in a generation that everything is selfish, li, li, magia, li. Even a child to a parent, he look at them like two. Ima, she is a maid, Ava is an ATM, and that's where it starts and that's where it ends. And he is the prince. So, ladies and gentlemen, you have a job to do. When you're going home, We switching. The kids will say, "What's going on over here?" Piton, they became uh, lovey davies. Yes. Yes. Okay. He said, "You see what happened when you're going to to learn? When you're going to learn, Hashem will open your brain, and now you start to appreciate." Become open-minded, Rav. Yeah. <laughs> Example. Tell me something. Who can say thank you even to the air condition? Well, you say that during summertime, because when it's hot, it's your lifesaver. You can't be without it. So you thank every second Hashem for your conditioner. Rabbi, in the and hot in Arizona, you have no choice. What? In the hot summer, when the air conditioner goes on, we thank Hashem. We're like, oh, thank God. I was just saying, in Arizona, you have no choice. It doesn't work. We complain. <laughs> God, why are you doing this? That's the test. Thank you, Hashem, that until now it worked, oh, Hashem. Thank God that somebody invented air, air condition. We didn't have. We didn't have. Could you imagine to see it, Yom Kippur, Be'eretz Israel, in a packed place, no air condition? A ventilator, you know, a fan, that and was, uh, like in Russia, you know, <laughs> it, it makes more heat than than air. Why, why? <laughs> and we took it. We took it. Today, Chas Shalom, if it's not cold enough or it's too cold in Beta Knesset. They won't go to why, shul. Why, 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 why? They won't go to shul, Rabbi. <laughs> Rabbi, it could even work. It could be a level for some people is hot, some people is good. Yeah. I know shuls that they have arguments and fights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because Magiali, I'm coming to pray, I'm doing you a favor, you know that? Magiali Akol, everything I deserve. The best place, the best chair, the best table, the best this. Ah. That's how you enter the shul. Here come Mr. Magiali. Right? Rabbi, I'm sorry, what Magia means? <laughs> what Magia means? Magia, what Magia means? I deserve, so, it, I deserve it. I deserve it. Rabbi is I the person that touched the air conditioner in shul. They think they deserve it.
We say in Yiddish, kunt mir. Kunt mir. <laughs> but in English, it's also, it's coming to me. It's coming yeah. to me. Okay. Well, by the Arizona, we had some problem like this. Yeah. <laughs> Very hard, but you had to try it. Ah, uh, that's from Arizona. Stasik, it's you? Yeah, you don't recognize me? No, I don't know. Oh, now I see you. Somebody sent me a text message. They found me from New York. So I started to listen to you. Very good. Good job. Thank you. Shlomo, his name is Shlomo, not Stasik. Shlomo. Stasik is your favorite name, I know. <laughs> yes. We call him a stand in our...